Hey there guys, welcome back to Rickart's journey through Skyrim where you catch us just by the fireside. We... I cannot tell you how glad I am to be away from Volskiga. The ruins that we were in last time. It was all going so well. So easy. Until... Death Lords and Dragon Priests. Baron, it is your job from now on to stop me from becoming so curious and power mad. I know these voices of power are indeed powerful, but are they worth it for all the suffer and torment? Well, it wasn't raining when I fell asleep. What we're going to do is that... We are finally, after our arborous journeys through the wilds, are returning to Falkfirebeard and Solitude to tell them that they no longer have to worry about vampires and necromancers trying to summon, you know, ne trying to summon spirits of powerful necromancers from times in memorial. So. Yeah, I think we've actually done a good job. We've come so far from just being the bandit hunter of Whiterun Hold. We're perhaps even now the saviour of solitude. I just wonder what else they'll have planned for us when we get back. I'll tell you what, I think also one possible thing we could do is actually investigate the Bard's College. So many people are actually telling me that I should go, wandering adventurers like myself and such on. Who knows, maybe we'll, ste we'll speak with Falk first, we'll get her a reward for clearing out Wolf Skull Cave and who knows, because I do need to return home because I'm carrying, I'm carrying an awful lot and I'm not terribly sure what's causing it. I mean, I suggest it's potions and a lot of ingredients that I really should use. Okay, so who's first? Reasonable bearded man or very mean mysterious vampire lady that no one actually knows is a vampire. <coughs> Let's get the unpleasant one out of the way. Sybil! If I needed something from you, you would know it. I cleared out the vampires from Pine Moon Cave. Filthy creatures, aren't they? Living in the darkness like they do. So uncivilized. Indeed. I prefer finery, like this. Here, for your trouble. And I suppose I should show you a little about illusion magic for free, shouldn't I? No, oh, you could. I would prefer restoration. But I'm doing that on my own. Take care of yourself, and always remember, the world is ripe with people looking to spill your blood. Oh, believe me, I know. Falk! <coughs> You've returned. Good. What did you find at Wolf Skull Cave? Some necromancers were attempting to summon and bind Potema. Potema herself? Please tell me you stopped them. I interrupted their ritual. It's done. You've done a larger service to the realm than you could possibly know. Oh, believe me, I know. Resurrected Potema. I shudder at the thought. You're very welcome. It's so good to see you again. What have you got for sale? So, you wish to master the arcane arts? Not really, but every little bit at a time. Uh, here, take... The ruby ring. Do you want some empty soul gems? And I suggest what it ever it is that's also heavy is in the books, maybe? I don't know. Any spells for my level? Fast healing got healing, healing hands, I have that. Turn lesser undead, steadfast ward. I have all those already. I 
and staff of Magi. No, you're good. Stay guarded. You never know what could be out there. <laughs> well, for me, it's dragons, cultists, the Thalmor are trying to kill me now. I don't know why. I'm just a very unfortunate soul at the moment. Who are you? Sibyl Stentor has a grasp of magical theory that I would never have expected from a human, even a Breton. What's your job here, Melloran? I make sure Erica keeps breathing. But you're not the court wizard. No, that honor is Sibyl Stentor's. A smart man steers clear of Stentor. And keeps himself out of the dungeon when she's having a bad day. What do you mean? Let's just say that the headsman's axe may not be the worst way for a solitude jail prisoner to die. Look at that. I told you to watch your tongue, and mine is waggling. I've said enough. You are free to leave. Of course I am. I do I do believe I know what you're on about, Melloran. Believe me. I do think I do. I'm not going to accept the status quo of Solitude, though. If she's managing to keep a low profile, who knows? May have to deal with her one day. Alright. The Bard's College, because... Why not? Could be fun. Where's the front door? There it is. Welcome to the Bard's College. I'm the headmaster here. How may I help you? I'm looking to apply to the college. Always a pleasure to meet a prospective Bard. You should be aware that many apply, but we accept very few people. When possible, we ask applicants to perform tasks the college needs completed. But in this case, I do have a task befitting an aspiring bard. What do you need me to do? Elisif has forbidden the burning of King Olaf, a festival put on by the Bard's College. We need to change her mind. To convince her, I want to read King Olaf's verse, a part of the poetic Edda, the living history of Skyrim. <laughs> Unfortunately, the verse was lost long ago. And that's where I come in. Yes. According to Giraud, our history's keeper, the portion of the Edda dealing with King Olaf might still exist in Dead Man's Respite. I need you to retrieve the poem. Has the war affected you much, then? Uh, not much. But as a bard, I find the whole affair depressing. There are no heroes in this war, no winners to be had, and no real conclusion. If you want something a bard can dig into, look to the dragons. A thousand years from now, Skyrim will have changed rulers dozens of times. But the return of the dragons, that story is once in an era. What do you know about the dragons? Not much, to be honest. Their return was a shock to us all. Gerard Germain has some tomes about them in the library, if you're interested. Maybe. But why does Elisif forbid the festival? It sounds completely separate. As you may be aware, Elisif's husband, High King Torig, was recently killed. Yes. Elisif mourns her husband deeply, and she feels that a festival that burns a king in effigy is... distasteful. Ah. I tried to convince her the festival is many centuries old and celebrates solitude, but I need proof. I believe King Olaf's verse will provide that proof. So what is the Poetic Edda? I think Giraud here would give you the best explanation of both it and the history of King Olaf's verse. You should speak to him about it. Is that the guy with the silly hat? I wish yes, it is. Finding the verse. Good to meet a prospective bard. What? I have Rajon's drum. Not sure why I would speak to you about that. At last, I have searched for this drum for twenty years. You have? This treasury is a bit thin right now, but I can show you some tricks I learned from my days with the army. Well, to be fair, I'm glad to be rid of such a heavy item. 
Blimey, you've sh you're showing me a lot here. And we're done. Viamo said you could tell me about the poetic Edda. He's sending you after King Olaf's verse, then. That's good. We shouldn't leave it lying around now that I figured out where it is. The verse was Svaknir's contribution to the poetic Edda, the living history of Skyrim. Each bard adds to the Edda in his or her time. So King Olaf's verse is a lost part of the Edda. And a very ancient one. The verse criticized the reigning King Olaf. He was so incensed the bard was put to death and all the copies burned. At least, that's what we thought until I translated some ancient texts a year or so ago. We now believe King Olaf buried the truth with the bard. If I'm right, Svaknir and King Olaf's verse lie in dead men's respite, along with the burial chamber of King Olaf himself. Be careful. You might find more than just King Olaf's... Remember? Yeah, I'm well aware I might find more than just King Olaf's verse. Song of the Alchemists. This was the book that Lamy wanted us to find. Doesn't seem that terribly long. Who was it written by? Marabar Sol. When King Moranian's alchemist had to leave his station after a laboratory experiment that yielded detonation. Okay, this is meant to be some kind of poem. The word went out that the king did want a new savant to mix his potions and brews, but he could declared he would only choose a fellow who knew the tricks and the tools. The king refused to hire on more fools. After much deliberation, discussions and debates, the king picked two well-learned candidates. Lanthippius, Minthurk, and Umpathic Thare. That's a very interesting name. An ambitious pair. Vied to prove one was the best, said the king. There will be a test. They went to a large chamber with herbs, gems and tomes. Pots, measuring cups, all under high crystalline domes. Make me a tonic that will make me invisible, laughed the king in a tone some would call resible. So Umpathic Fur and Lethippius Minthurk began to work. Mincing herbs, mashing metal, refining strange oils, continuously setting their cauldrons to burbling boils, each on his own sending mixing bowls, mixing sometimes peeking to see what the other was fixing. Ay ay ay. After they had worked for nearly three quarters an hour, both Lithippius Minthurk and Umphatic Fair winked at each other. Certain he won, said King Moranian. Now you must taste the potions you've wrought. Take a spoon and sample it right from your pot. Minthurk vanished as his lips touched his brew, but Fair tasted his and remained apparent in view. You think you mixed silver, blue diamonds and yellow grass, the king laughed. Look up, Fair up to the ceiling glass. The light failing, the light falling makes the ingredients you choose quite different hues. What do you get? asked the floating voice. Bold of a potion of red diamonds, blue grass and gold by Dwemer God, said Fair, his face in a wince. I've made a potion to fortify my own intelligence. Publishers note, this poetry is so clearly in the style of Gore Felim that it really does not need any commentary. Note the simple rhyming scheme of A, A, B, B and C, C. The sing song is purposefully clumsy and the recurring jokes at the obviously absurd names Umphatic Fair and Lanthippius Minthurk 
The final joke that the stupid alchemist invents a potion to make himself smarter by pure accident would have appealed to the anti-intellectualism of audiences in the interregnum period, but would certainly be rejected by the Dwemer. Note that even Marabar's soul refuses to name any Dwemer gods. The Dwemer religion, if it can even be called that, is one of the most complex and difficult puzzles of their culture. Over the millennia, the song became popular, Tavern Song in High Rock. Okay, so if Elder Scrolls 6 is in High Rock, I expect to hear this in Taverns, yes? Eventually disappearing from everything but scholarly books, much like the Dwemer themselves. Oh, I need this book for Lamy, but it's considered stealing if I do so. Hidden from plain sight. There we go. No doubt this is something that I could simply take once I become indoctrinated into the college. We will never know. So they want me to go to a Nordic ruin, no doubt. What's the time? 7.15? Let's have a look. Where do they want me to go? Oh, let's get rid of that. Dead man's respite. So bring one song of the alchemists to Lamy. Dead man's respite is on the way back towards Whiterun. We need to head back to Whiterun to deliver Igrod's note to Danica. Then, we need to meet whoever took the horn. Now, I do believe, festival aside, that I think getting to Riverwood should be the priority. So we're going to... We're going to sleep, wake up in the morning, and make our way back to Whiterun. Maybe by carriage? What do you think? That road was long. And I don't want to get distracted by Dead Man's Respite because... I've still got the scars from Volkskigger. Okay, so here we are, first thing in the morning. We're going to make our way to the carriage driver down by the... Uh, down by the... Mm, down by the farm. The, na the stables. The name of where horses were kept was escaping me. It's not too bad of a morning. Just a little bit chilly. Oh, there's nothing... Solitude has served us well, if not... Who's this in the road? Who are you? Resinda. How high the mountains of Skyrim rise. Oh, if you're here... Then so should... Resard, but I can't remember where they set up in Solitude. Right. Need a ride? Where do you want to go? Oh wow, it's expensive. Let's see. I want to go to White Run. Climb and back, and we'll be off. Yeah, I know. I I installed a mod that makes um, taverns and carriages a bit more expensive for the yep. war economy. I just think that 10 gold septums a night is awfully cheap. Plus, it encourages me to camp more often outside of cities. Not to worry about having to get to the city, I can just set up my own camp. But, resting outside is different from resting inside. That's the different beneficiaries for... Ah, this is much better. Oh, we remember you. Speak quickly. Hello. We are travelling to the Shrine of Kinnereth in Whiterun. I hear the Gildegreen is more beautiful than ever since it's been restored. Yeah, I restored it. Are you telling me you've not been in there yet? 
Right, so what should we do? Let's head home first to offload everything because I want to know what's making me overladen so often. Really annoying. I know in survival the weight is different and I can and I carry less than I would outside of survival mode, but I just need to figure it out. My equipment and my armor can't be that heavy. Maybe I should switch to... I know I'm wearing light armor already, but there are possibly lighter options than what I'm wearing. Plus, I might actually leave Miko at the house because... You know, that's kind of been... That's kind of been the plan. Having... Miko and Belrand I think is just a little bit too OP while we're out and about. It's very useful, believe me, it's very useful. But there's also a little bit too much. It takes a little bit away from the challenge of wandering into enemies. Plus mentally for me it makes me less aware because I know that Miko will detect anything well before I do. Animal instincts and all that jazz. I hope there's not been any dragons in my time away. We haven't faced anything in solitude, so... Maybe they're keeping their distance. If the dragons learn that there's a dragon born who can absorb their strength... Maybe they're going to be a little bit more tactical about how they face me. Which is indeed a little bit scary but all part of the territory. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. It's from Falk Firebeard at the Blue Palace. I've just come from there, seriously. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Really, what on earth does he want now? He must have sent this literally as I left. Let's give it a read. Rickart, over the last few days it's not been a day. It's not even been a day. We've had some disturbing information come to light regarding the events at Wolf Skull Cave. And the summoning and binding ritual you interrupted there. Given your involvement with the event, I'm asking you to return to Solitude to help us once more. I'm wary of putting all the details in print. Please come see me at the Blue Palace. Sincerely, Fork Firebeard. We're not going back there anytime soon. He can wait. We are busy, busy people. And I realise, um, when I was offloading some stuff, you'll realise I'm leaving Miko behind. He's now got a new home. Oh, I don't want to take him with me everywhere I go. Plus, he doesn't seem to get along with Belrand at all. Despite, well, probably would explain why Belrand conjures his dogs. As weird as that sounds. Um, turns out a lot of the weight that I carry comes from the potions that I create. Given that actually makes a lot of sense. I make too many potions. And I don't use enough. So, I've left some. And sort of, I'm doing a lot better. I'm, I've got about half the carry weight still free. So we're going to head to Danica Pure Spring and speak to her about uh, Jarl Igrod's son, Yorick. Because Idgrod, the younger, completely different person, is the Jarl's daughter and wants us to uh, pass on this note in regards to Yorick's health. And hence, after that, we're going to head towards towards Riverwood because we've been made a bit of a fool in heading to Ustengrave. I think someone has outwitted the Greybeards, and we need to find out who. God, you could see a dragon coming from miles away.
I doubt they've rebuilt that watchtower even. Plus, even if this person does have the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, that's going to mean I have to hike it back up that mountain. That I'm not looking forward to. Least of all, at least hopefully some of the creatures that I killed on that road shouldn't be back. I think that's... Yeah, I think I'm going to buy a horse. Not walking all the way back up that mountain. I mean, Belrand can jog. I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, here's the Alakir that we need to speak to as well. I found a lot of your people harassing women on the roads. Care to explain? Hmm? Who are you looking for? A woman. A foreigner in these lands. Redguard, like us. She is likely not using her true name. We will pay for any information regarding her location. We are not welcome here in Whiteron. So we will be in Rorikstead if you learn anything. Why are you looking for this person? It's none of your concern. All you need to know is that we're paying for information. If that doesn't interest you, feel free to walk away. And just repeat to me, who are you looking for again? We're looking for a fugitive who comes from Hammerfell. A Redguard woman. She may be somewhere in this city. There are a few Redguard women in this city. I'm surprised they weren't harassing Adrienne. Or maybe they were. You're someone who can get things. Take a look. Well, here we go. This looks rather dashing. I've just decided to change the colours up just a little bit. I was getting a little bit bored with greens and browns, but this kind of all blackish grey get up is kind of fitting. Yeah, we're going to stick with this for a while. Right, so. Danica Pure Spring. She was up in the temple of... Oh, Danica. Hi again. A fine day to you, friend. May you die with a sword in your hands. I have a delivery from Idgrod the Younger. Yorick's sister? Poor child. Magic runs deep in that family's bloodline. It's not always a blessing. Thank you for this. Something for your trouble. There we go, so... Nothing else? I don't have to head back to her? Oh. Assisted free people assisted people of Hyalmarch three of free return to Idgrod. So sick. I'm gonna be made another thane of another hold. Probably. Well, I don't know about you, Belrond, but I could use a drink at the inn. This autumn night is you know it's warm, let's have a refreshing drink at the I didn't know there was a Talos shrine outside of Whiterun. I'm surprised how that's not been removed. Odd. Has that always been there? Welcome. Let me know if you want anything. I think I got a clean mug around here somewhere. Sadia, wake up, dear. Yes, Mum. You want a drink? Depends. Are you thirsty? Hungry? Both. 
Let's see, what do you have? Argonian blood wine. What do you think, Bel Belrin? Do you think that will do it? Yeah, we'll take this. It's expensive, but worth it. Anything else? Nope, I think we're good. Hey, you're Red Guard, right? Did you know some Alakir warriors are looking for Red Guard? For a Red Guard woman? Are you sure? Yes. Oh no. They found me? That was easy. I need your help, please. Come with me. I need to speak to you privately. Quickly, come with me. The age of aggression is just about done. Bell and wait here. Very well. Just be careful. I'm always careful. He says. Both hands on his sword blade. Back our home. Down with Ulfric, the killer of kings. On the day of your death, we will drink and we'll sing. I'm not liking the idea of this. Of Skyrim, and we fight all our lives. Southern Guard beckons everyone of so, us. So, what do you with them? You think you can take me? You so much as touch me, and you're going to lose but fingers. This land is ours. I mean we'll it. See it I'll, I'll cut you in half. I'd like to see you try. What did they offer you? Gold? How many more of them are coming? They just asked me to find you. You can't tell them. Please, I need your help, and there isn't anyone I can trust here in the city. Maybe. What do you want? I am not the person that the people of White Run think I am. Clearly. My real name is Eamon. I am a noble of House Suda in Hammerfell. The men who are looking for me, the Alakir, they are assassins in the employ of the Almarie Dominion. They wish to exchange my blood for gold. I need you to root them out and drive them away before they find me and drag me back to Hammerfell for an execution. How am I supposed to get rid of them? They're mercenaries, only in it for the money. They're led by a man named Kamatu. Get rid of him, and the rest will scatter. I don't dare show my face, lest they recognize me, so you'll have to find out where they are. Any suggestions? I heard one of them was just arrested trying to sneak into the city. If he's locked up in the jail, perhaps you can get it out of him. Please, I know I'm asking you to do something difficult, maybe even dangerous. I just don't know who else I can trust. Why are they after you? I don't know for sure. I spoke out against the Aldmeri Dominion publicly. I suspect that's why these men were hired to hunt me down. And why haven't you gone to the guards? You think I'd be in hiding if this was something I trusted town guards to handle? These men are ruthless. Cunning, deceitful. They'll pay off whoever they can. I can't trust anyone here in Whiterun. Guards and Jarls can be bought. And the Alakir are close. I'm running out of time, so I'm choosing to trust you. Find me the moment the Alakir are taken care of. Okay. I'll speak to these Alakir for you. But I'm not entirely trusting of you either. You might have killed me there and then, were it not, you know, being a busy place. I guess I need to put my investigator's hat on once more. <laughs>